Yeah, it is like being back in school when you're asked to count to 20 and you get a bit nervous around 15. <laughs> 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 you hope to God you can get there. Yeah. Um, the mics are working, which is the main thing. Anyway, I was just saying the trial of Liam Byrne and Thomas Bomber Kavanagh which is due to take place in the Old Bailey in September, looks like it's going ahead, even though the position isn't quite simple. You have Byrne and Kavanagh in custody, along with their co-accused Sean Kent and Daniel McLaughlin. You have uh, Bomber's son, Jack Kavanagh, still in Spain fighting extradition on charges relating to this, this gun plot. And you have the position of Patter Keating being that he was... In Ireland, he's still in Portlaoise prison as far as we know. And he had been fighting his extradition, although I believe he's been in negotiations about going to the UK. So maybe we'll know a bit more about that at the end of the week. But the trial is going to go ahead. You, you, you're at a pre-trial hearing. The date of it may be questionable, but... Yeah, so there was, a, I suppose, one of these case management sessions. So you had the, the accused men eventually turning up on, on video link. Um, and the various counsel for for both sides. The other things each to of the do. four. Well, it, they must have. I know it was actually it was down to the Belmarsh prison being very short staffed, but the judge wasn't happy about that because he felt that you know it's only fair that people who are accused are able to listen into their own case management, and he insisted he wants a higher level of refusal before um, uh, you know he'd he'd be satisfied. So he put it back to two o'clock. So but they went through a lot of the case management this morning. Were they basically was he hoping that they'd show up in court in the old Bailey? N no, he was expecting to be on video link and right. that's what had been organized. And apparently the message came through that Belmash are too short staffed and they couldn't actually bring them up. They just just weren't able to. So yeah. but they did they turned up then after the the the, the afternoon session started and I'd right. say we're twenty minutes into it and Liam Byrne and and, uh, and Thomas Kavanagh were brought both in two separate uh, video booths and sat and listened to the proceedings. Right. So Liam Byrne, of course, was arrested in Mallorca last summer and returned uh, after he fought a bit of extradition to the UK on these charges. So he's been in Belmarsh along with Bomber? Well, they're in the same prison. Yeah. Um, whether they're sharing a landing or anything like that, we have no idea. Um, I mean, there, there was no... You know, like they're brought into the 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 sounds of of chains and yeah. and heavy locks being opened and closed and doors slamming shut. Um, like there was no their their microphones are turned off, so it wasn't like they could say anything to either each other or to anyone in the court. And of course, their brother-in-law. Just anyone who doesn't realise that Bomber Kavanagh is married to Joanne Byrne, Liam Byrne's uh, sister, and Liam Byrne's brother, David Byrne. Bomber Kavanagh's brother-in-law was murdered at the Regency Hotel, which sort of brought that whole Kavanagh burn organisation to the table in a huge way with the Kinnahans over the preceding years from 2016 onwards. And they were very much involved in murders here in Ireland on behalf of the Kinnahan organisation. But at the same time, the Kavanagh burn organisation was being targeted in the, US, in the UK by the National Crime Agency. Weapons were found in January 27 in a... Uh, in a yard, basically in a warehousing yard out in uh, Rathcool in Dublin. And some documents found there were handed to the National Crime Agency in the UK. And it basically led them to the door of Bomber Kavanagh's drug importation business. Yeah, and but even the even the raid on the Green Oak Industrial Estate, that came from a tip-off from, from uh, the UK police. That was mentioned in one, one of the trials. So... You know, they got, I suppose it worked out well, they got more back than they yeah. bargained for, I guess, and that. But that was certainly, that was the beginning of the end. That was the, the start of all the troubles for Bomber Cavan at that, that raid in 2017. And along with other people like uh, Mr. Nobody, Brady, and all the rest of them, and James Walsh, who's mm. lost his house to cab recently. All, all of those people who were kind of, I suppose, the supporting infrastructure behind the Kinahan cartel in Ireland have basically been rolled up as a result of that raid. I mean, they are really the top dogs of that organisation here in Ireland and Bomber in the UK and based in Birmingham for years. Patter Keating, of course, who is, uh, they're looking to extradite him on these charges as well, these gun charges, which we'll come on to. But he is, he was kind of one of Bomber Kavanagh's main men in Dublin. He uh, pleaded guilty to directing a criminal organisation and was tied up in that murder plot against James Mago Gately. Uh, that plot which sort of uh, swept up the Estonian hitman Imre Arrakis. A lot of names put out there now, but uh, we need a 
you know, a chart. I think so, and yeah. the wall behind us. tree behind everything. Tree, Just remember exactly. which plot we're talking about now. So back to what happened in the, the pre-trial hearing. Yeah, so... Again, maybe it just it might be helpful to give a little explainer. So basically, yeah. Bomber Kavanagh is accused of of um, organising a cache of guns to be hidden in Newry so that he could then use the discovery of these guns to get time off his potential sentence for the, the case we were just talking about, the, the importation of drugs into the UK, 30, the equivalent of 36 million euro worth of cocaine. So it, it wasn't insignificant. So this wheeze anyway was dreamt up. Um, it sucked in Patrick Keating. It sucked in Liam Byrne. Mm. They were um, like we've seen some of the. I think in, in Patrick Keating's extradition hearing, we heard some of the the details of the messages that were sent and guns being sourced in in Holland. Um, or these were on Encro. This, this, this was yeah. This was on Encro. Um, again, this is all the you know. So this is this is where the NCA um, yeah. put all this information into the arrest, into the extradition warrant. Sorry for for Patrick Keating. Mm. So we got some detail of that, uh, obviously because th there's been very little detail so far of of apart from the the, the the charges that you know that they've been charged with conspiracy to pervert the cause of justice and mm. possession of weapons. So. That, that's what that's connected to. So last Friday then was basically a management meeting, kind of a, well, a, a case management meeting where l the lawyers were all there for both sides, both for the the, the, the Crown um, and also for um, the various defendants, including separately, you know, Kavanaugh and Byrne. And they were kind of talking about how long the case was going to take. Um, They're talking about, you know, whether or not any information or any, 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 say, witnesses would be agreed and they don't need to be called. So it was all about trying to figure out how long it's going to take. And it was everything. It was basically up to two months at this stage. And they were talking about a full week of legal argument starting next month and that, you know, a jury being sworn in a, a week later than had originally been planned. Mm. So all of this is to come. And uh, there's another management meeting before then even as well. Okay. So they might agree more things that they're not going to contest. But on the face of it, it doesn't look like they're going to... Um, put their hands up to anything. I mean, it looks like it's at, on on the face of it, uh, it's they're going to challenge every spit and cough of the of the crown's case against them. Um, I suppose they've nothing to lose. I mean, mm. they're looking at the serious sentences. They're, I mean, Bomber's already serving twenty one years, but certainly Liam Byrne is is, is you know facing something similar mm -hmm. on on, the, on these these kind of charges. And like you know, in Bomber's case, he did plead guilty ultimately to the previous. Um, those those drugs charges we're talking about. And of course, the NCA at that point, having got the address from the weapons uh, headquarters here in Dublin through the Gardaí, they launched an undercover operation on these um, premises. They discovered these shipments of drugs at, into the UK and onwards, they believe, to Ireland and the outward movement of money to pay for them. And they managed to successfully proved that, you know, there had been 22 of these shipments over a period of time um, and other members of, of, of Kavanaugh's network were also before the courts and also pleaded guilty, but still they got those hefty sentences. Like, what would they have got? You'd wonder. He got, I mean, he got 21, 22 years. I was there in court that day. Quite an enormous sentence, really, for somebody who had evaded the inside of prison for, you know, decades. But in his case now, He's a couple of years into serving that sentence. Presumably, you can get out for some of it on license. He's a guy in his, well, in his 50s now. You know, in this case, what happens if he gets another hefty sentence, if he is found guilty in this? Does that go on top of what he's serving in and when the UK? It, it's a, it would be a consecutive sentence. Like, I mean, it's a separate, it's a separate crime. It wasn't, as they say, you know, uh, a criminal offence committed in the same transaction. It was a completely separate mm. crime. I mean, obviously, if you rob a bank, yeah, you know, you've possession of weapons, threats to kill, theft, you know, there, there are three separate charges, you know, whatever, you know, you're driving a stolen car, allowing yourself to be carried in a stolen car, you know, you could have mm. 17 charges against you for the one bank robbery, but you don't get consecutive sentences because it's the one transaction, so to yeah. speak, the one criminal act. But in the case where there, there's very separate um which is very kind of, I suppose, a separate commission of crime. Mm. And then when you have the fact that one is actually aimed at, at trying to undermine the other, it's it's a crime directed at something that you're already <laughs> are about to go on trial for. So I, it's it's not going to be... They're not in a good position. No, they're certainly not. Um, and it does, it does kind of, from what w was able to glean from Friday's hearing was that it looks like it's going to be a really um, complex trial if everything is fought. Um, they were talking about dozens of pages of EncroChat messages 
and whether or not these would be, you know, read to the jury or how it would be presented to them. Um, they were also talking over cross-examining the Mr. Encro chat man from the NCA, a, a particular um, expert who was involved in designing software to extract the information they needed from the raw data that were given to him by the French police. Mm. Um, and he's apparently very busy. He, he does three trials a day. When he, do, he does Tuesdays is his day for going to trial, which the judge kind of thought was a bit strange that, you know, surely other people, you know, including clinicians who are, use, you know, out and about saving lives in hospitals, and they can find the time to come to court. So why can't, um, why can't this man from the NCA, <laughs> NCA make a similar um, effort? Anyway, it, it's, it's going to be... It's going to be interesting to see. Um, and on a point in that, I think that there has been a huge amount of challenges to EncroChat evidence in the UK, to the harvesting of it, to the use of it, and to have been put before the courts and juries. And each one of those challenges has failed to date. Um, I don't know whether you'd want to be relying on that. Well, I suppose it, there's every chance that one of these challenges will at some point succeed. Um, there's another case that was was mentioned. Now, they didn't say which case, but they said there was they were expecting a ruling on it in September, and that would that would dis probably affect whether or not they were going to use this defence. Like they haven't said they're going to do this defence. Mm -hmm. They said, look, it's judge, a it's a possibility. possibility. Yeah. So we don't know if it's going to be a six week or an eight week or a four week trial at this stage. Um, this is a little bit sounds a little bit like horse trading. Um, is, it, is, is it? This happens before. Look, there could still be for what we know, there could still be some efforts behind the scenes to come to a plea deal, which is what did happen in the previous case with, with Bomber Cavanaugh. They did eventually agree to plead to a certain amount, but not everything that was been put to yeah. the court in the original case. Um, and, and they're still looking for bargaining chips in yeah. the sense that it was mentioned that they'd finally gotten free legal aid for a digital expert to basically, as, as I think it was Cavanaugh's counsel put it, to, to check the NCA's homework so obviously they're going to have somebody go through it all and see if they can find a mistake that they, they, then they can use mm -hmm. and say to the NCA's counsel, well, you made a mistake here, you, you're not going to be able to use this evidence or we can bring it to court and fight over it. So, but, and again, you know, that report isn't going to be ready for a couple of weeks. So, I mean, the, the clock is ticking. You're down yeah. to four weeks or five weeks for when the trial was originally going to start. So, I mean, I suppose they're, they're looking at every possibility of mm -hmm. trying to find some kind of way out or a chink in the armour of the evidence against them. But nonetheless, the judge did say that they, they were going to hopefully swear in a jury by the 9th of September. Yeah, yeah. And, and he, he was talking about, um, you know, contacting the, the person in charge of organising the jury to say that we're going to need a substantial jury pool, um, you know, and suggesting that it was likely going to be the 9th rather than the 2nd of September. Which was the original trial date given. But they said then they're going to spend that first week in, in legal argument. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that They did have some other issues that they were, they were going to bring up and they felt it would take a week. Now, they didn't, again, specify exactly what these were. Mm. But they have, they have their, their different areas. Like, you know, um, just even... I mean, they were talking about how... You know, do they, need, do they really need a witness to explain how EncroTrap works and how the devices work and... Uh, how it was extracted from the server by the French police and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's the real, it's the real nuts and bolts of a, of a kind of, I suppose in Ireland it would be in the book of evidence, um, you know, and you could have huge amounts of, of witnesses discussing how, you know, some, you know, somebody drove from here to, from A to B and gave all the evidence, but it's, it's not really necessary because the crime didn't happen, you know, it happened at sea, but at the same time, if you're going to challenge every spit and cough, this is what you end up going through. And we saw it in a trial, like say, the Mr. Moonlight murder mm -hmm. trial, you know, where every tiny scrap was, was, was fought over. And, you know, there was as much legal argument as there was, you know, um, open legal argument in front of the jury. So uh, I suppose they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to nail down all the legal arguments before they go to trial so they can run straight through the jury that there, there isn't going to be a sudden, oh, yeah. hang on, we never discussed this before and go straight into, you know, a whole week of the jury sitting at home waiting to be called back. So in total, there's like there's there's numerous charges against all of them, but um, what they're what this the the case of the the UK state is that together they conspired to purchase and to sort of dump these weapons in Newry uh, at a time when Bob McAvena was facing trial and facing a lengthy sentence in relation to the drugs charges that they the sort of the grouping and with with Kavanaugh in in directing it um believed that this was going to 
knock a couple of years off his sentence, basically. But somewhere in this plot, it all came undone when the National Crime Agency didn't play ball with it or, you know, the weapons were seized in, in Newry. We have a, a kind of, we were able to point to the, the, the weapons being seized at the correct period of time. Um, but clearly this grouping didn't realise that this plot had been picked up on, on EncroChat on the phones and the National Crime Agency were sort of in the background doing their own investigation into this and weren't going to sort of play ball with the organisation. Yeah, um, yeah. Because if you go back, if you remember, if we go back to the Green Oak, I mean, that was 2017. So yeah. that was three years before the French police had got their hands on the Anchor Chat service, and they were listening to them live. I mean, they I think they put them in a van, like, and managed to keep them going, and had them in their own lab, and they were going for uh, you know uh, uh, from April 2020. Yeah, so they were listening. Mm. So all this stuff was 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 being used, and it was being stored or whatever, and d eventually distributed to the various police agencies. I mean, the, the stuff with the um, extradition warrant with with um, with Keating, like his his alleged uh, handle was a pony, and he was dealing he was dealing with uh, Basil Badge and Ty Live, who was who was supposed to be Liam Byrne, and Basil Badge was was Kavanagh. This or sorry, was alleged to be Jack Kavanagh. Jack Kavanagh, yeah. And so this this is they were trying to. And get there's no 14 there's no firearms. handle for Bomber Kavanagh's phone, I guarantee you, because he he seemed to have always tried to keep himself away from the phones. Yeah, they had a they had somebody called Marco Safe, who mm. was described as being the messenger for Thomas Bomber Kavanagh, um, and and then it was you know messages like on on May 14, ready to go, and Ty Live will assist or organise with the delivery and this kind of stuff and we have 20 small yokes in a flat, uh, sorry, in flat, and flat, they believe, referred to the Netherlands being a flat country. Um, so th th this is this is kind of pretty much the live plot that they had. Interestingly, the that's exactly the same um, language that they used in the original one because there was details of, uh, you know, text messages at that point and, and phone messages and directions going to and from the various accused and Kavanagh, Bomber Kavanagh himself believed he was a step away from that and he wouldn't, you know, use his own phone. He was giving directions to the others to get rid of their phones all the time, to change them, to use burners. But the flat, I remember, was one of the, the nicknames they flat used for the Netherlands. Yeah, it and full, yeah, and it's abbreviated sometimes the flat then. Yeah. Um, so they didn't change much. But uh, interestingly, this plot must have been underway or being directed by Kavanagh while he's in custody. Because he was, of course, in custody from about January 2019 when there was a raid happened uh, between the Irish Guardi and the National Crime Agency in the UK. And a pink stun gun was found in his house on the top of the kitchen shelves. Not a particularly maybe scary weapon, but nonetheless an illegal weapon. And he took the rap for it, said he'd brought it back from his kids or bought it for one of the kids from China or from somewhere like this. And he was sort of put into custody on a holding charge, maybe on that, um, that became an underworld sort of point of laughter and giggles that that's all they had on Bomber Kavanagh, a pink stun gun. Wasn't much of an investigation, was it? But of course, while he was in custody, he was taken uh, in for questioning in relation to the, the wider drugs plot. And I think he realised at that point that he was tied up in something. He hadn't remained at arm's length from it and that the National Crime Agency had actually quite a lot on him. Um, at which point he took a bit of a flutter and ended up in hospital um, before being placed back in custody. And of course, then he was he was facing these big charges and he realised there was a big sentence awaiting him, even if he pleaded guilty. So those EncroChat phones were obviously in the prisons. I don't know why I'm surprised by that. Um, they were obviously there in the prisons as well as the normal. Phones. Well, if he's even if he's using someone else, if he's communicating yeah. with a third party, like this, this whoever the macro person was, you know, he, he I suppose he thought again he was being arm's length from the actual network. Mm -hmm. but I suppose they didn't. None of these guys realised at that time uh, that uh, Anchor Chat had been hacked. And I mean, the, the amount of cases in the UK is phenomenal. I mean, you just Google. EncroChat and Operation Venetic and mm -hmm. like there's I think there's about two or three a week as far as I can figure out going on at the minute and some of them are, are people I, there was two uh, li two guys in Liverpool done last week mm -hmm. and they weren't particularly well known you know and it was like millions of euro worth of cocaine like there's been a lot of these Mr. Nobodies after being rolled up on, sure. on the back of this so I mean they're all going to be watching this case and the other cases where if there is a successful challenge 
to the anchor chat evidence, they're all going to be running straight down that culvert trying to mm -hmm. get out of jail card free. One of the briefings that was given here um, in the aftermath of the anchor chat hack, and I suppose the fact that um, the information hadn't, hadn't been necessarily disseminated down the lines from crime and security here, we we operated like very differently to every other country that was getting the information from that hack. Um, one of the briefings that was given to the media at the time was that Irish criminals didn't use Encro. So it's interesting to see that Patrick Keating had one, one of the most significant criminals in the Kinahan network at that time uh, in the country. Um, just putting that out, you know. And we knew one of the Lachlan brothers from Galway who was on trial in the north for the same, did the same thing, organising criminal activities using, using his Encro chat phone. Um, certainly it looks, it, it, when you look at the Robbie Lawler case, it looks as if there has to be Encro on that. And the PSNI in the north are adamant that that plot was um, put together, the plot to kill Robbie Lawler in April 2020 was put together in the south and was organised by two major significant organised crime gangs, the, the sort of the Barry Young operation in Sligo and the Mr Big operation in Dublin. But hey, none of the Irish criminals were using Encro, were they? We just had, we just looked away. <laughs> we looked away. Um, well, I suppose there is that argument of, uh, I suppose in Ireland there's a, a habit of intelligence is intelligence and it's not ev evidence. Um, mm. And you, 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 and that's why I suppose, like even even in, in Bomber and Burns' case um, on Friday, like it was mentioned, the various issues that might be coming up was, um, was wh whether the slang used is the meaning right. And then with all the various messages that they were complaining then as well, that they were going to, they were giving notice that they were going to object to running commentary in the expert evidence that, you know, somebody in the NCA was writing in uh, like handy little links between various bits of messaging or whatever to kind of explain, to mm -hmm. make it easier for someone to follow. But they're suggesting that's kind of leading you and your thinking and that's not necessarily... Um, it's not evidence. So I think they're, they're kind of agreeing all this kind of stuff now at the minute as well. I think there's even a, a, a witness who who was, who's, could be called to give evidence on how long the bag was in the ground. So it's, it's the physical evidence they have, which is the guns in the bag. And to be, able, to, be able to, to be able to sever that link between it and the timing of the messages on the Encro chat. So that's what's you going on You know, it's going to be extraordinary, right? To hear the detail and hopefully in a way this trial goes ahead because of course you hear far more detail than you do if anybody pleads guilty and you just have a, a sentence hearing. But like, how were they going to go that next step as an organisation and hand the guns over to the authorities and then somehow in the background, do a plea deal to get a lesser sentence. How is that going to work? I don't know. How does it work between How does that when, they work? To, when they want to inform on somebody or, or what they want to inform the I can understand that, that and I've heard I've heard it before many times that that you know informants or people working with the cops will sometimes, you know, the cops won't like this, but they will sometimes hand up some stuff. So as the, you know, a guard, a handler in the past, certainly I have heard this happening. A guard, a handler would, you know, find weapons and that would look really good for them and would, you know, boost their careers and all that. Definitely heard of that. But how do you do it when you're before the courts and you have to convince somebody, presumably, to stand up in court and give some evidence for Bomber Cabinet in order for him to get a lesser sentence? <clears throat> or were they in the background hoping that the states, the UK, the, U, the, UK the, the Queen's councils were going to be privy to this and, you know, reduce the plea? I, I would imagine the way it would work, you wouldn't necessarily have someone come up and give evidence or you wouldn't have anyone approaching the judge quietly, you know, on, on the behalf of the Crown. I'm saying, look, he's done a deal, like be nice to him. I think they'd just agree to, uh, they'd say, judge, we've come to an agreement with the defendant and there, he's, he's, he wants to be rearranged and he'd be stood up and rearranged on lesser charges. Lesser charges. And then he'd, he'd take whatever punishment. But he still hope for the best. Yeah, but I mean, if, if, you're getting, if you're getting dropped down from, you know, possession of 36 million to conspiracy mm -hmm. to commit an unspecified crime, you know, you're likely to get a lot lower sentence or whatever, depending on the jurisdiction you're in. But I'm sure there's ways of of reorganizing the charges so that you're not completely scot-free, but, you know, serving eight years as opposed to a 21-year sentence is probably at that point a, an enticing kind of reward. So in other words, those weapons, while they were discovered in, in Newry, they were discovered because of 
the, you know, the, the let's say that the, the cabinet organization allegedly got these weapons, put them in Nuri in the ground. They were hoping to keep them there until they had done their deal in the background. This is what the, the case is going to be. But unfortunately for them, uh, the PSNI moved in and actually seized those weapons before they got to do their deal. And in the background, they were under scrutiny and under, um, they were being hacked, basically. So they, they were going to be brought to court for this. They're being brought to court for this plot that they were hoping to, to carry out. Yeah, we're not entirely clear how the guns were discovered, whether or not it was um, it, the tip-off had already come from Kavanaugh's side mm -hmm. or whether there was other information from someone else or whether they were like had already done a live, uh, I suppose, look at the Encro chat and knew exactly what was happening as it was as it was happening. So whether it was any of those, either way, they had the evidence of the Encro chat so they could break any deal because they said, look, you, you haven't, you've lied about, you know, these guns. You, we, we know you put them there. They weren't there beforehand. Plus, I mean, it was a pretty fearsome cache of weapons. I mean, the PS and I aren't, aren't, weren't too happy, I'd imagine, with, you know, 11, 11 um, guns and ammunition. Uh, one of them was a, a Czech Scorpion submachine gun and a, and a Heckler and Koch submachine gun, as well as pistols and ammunition. So, I mean... And they were discovered in May of 2021, so they presumably had been sat there for quite some time. Well, not necessarily. That's when they were found. But, mm. like, you know, the, the, I suppose the plot, the conspiracy to, our, to acquire the guns and ammunition started in January 2020 and, you know, continued till uh, June 21, mm -hmm. like a month after the, the, the guns are discovered. So, I mean, it, it would have been... Can you remember exactly when EncroChat was hacked? I can remember exactly when EncroChat was hacked, which is why I'm looking at the dates and it's sort of... There's obviously a bit of information coming off Encro, but there's obviously more information coming from surveillance or whatever. EncroChat started in April, beginning of April 2020, and it went on for about four months. It went on until about July. And um, so those guns were found in, the in May 2021 almost a year afterwards, there is certainly evidence being put before the courts, which is some of this uh, discussion and plot that's happening on Encro. But then the, the discovery of the weapons uh, is obviously just when the location of them is discovered, which has to be through a different means, unless they are disseminating those Encro messages all the way through and trying, trying to, we've seen in other cases that, you know, they will have the messages and they'll have a handle, but they take a while to identify whose Who's handle it yeah. is. Um, and that can have taken a while. So, um, but look, but let's was, hope this trial well, goes ahead in a way because it'll be, it should be fascinating, the evidence yeah. that's going. Well, I'm just confusing ourselves with the dates a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> but even even the first message here in, in the arrest warrant um, for Patrick Keating, it was mentioned that uh, a pony was messaged by allegedly uh, Kavanaugh's man in April the 8th, 2020. So that would have been around the time. It's the that very beginning Encro of Encro, yeah. So it's quite possible they had a live in on what was going on. And maybe took a while to, to identify the handles and who was where. And, you know, I suppose if you wanted to identify the handle of whoever actually gave the location, it could have taken months or up to a year because the amount of the level of, of messages on Encro was phenomenal. I mean, there was millions and millions yeah. and millions of them to go through. Um, but as I say, I'm sort of hopeful that that trial goes ahead because I think it'll be fascinating, the evidence, if it does, one way or another. Okay, Eamon, well, we'll come back to this in September. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. one way or another. Excellent. Thanks, Emil. That was a pleasure. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.